Welcome back everyone and on today's show, The New You, we are discussing how we can change ourselves for the better. And joining us, we have Jenny Garrett, trainer and author of Rocking Your Role. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Oh, I'm delighted to have you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So tell us, what inspired you to write this book? Well, it was really interesting. I was on the internet, you know, just sort of Googling, looking around, and um, I came across an article about female breadwinners. And I thought, this is really interesting. I, you know, something I hadn't really had any conversations with anyone about before. I read the article and it made me realise that I was the main earner in my home. Mm. Um, my husband, who'd been an accountant, had started working with disaffected young people. So really good work, but not earning as much. And I'd gone into running my own business and my salary had really jumped. And I thought, gosh, this brought out lots of challenges for women who are the main earner. You know, the things that happen every day, if you go into a restaurant with a man, you know, uh, who do they give the bill to? The man always. Yeah. And what do you do? You know? <laughs> Usually. Yeah. Take the bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. What do you do? Do you slide the credit card under the table? Do you make a joke, you know, that you're paying today and never go to that restaurant again? Um, and also things about ego as well. I realised that because I was the main earner, I was making a lot of decisions without really consulting my husband. I was just like oh it's my money I'll do it and uh, you know that's not a good thing to do yeah. so the article helped me realize that there are loads of challenges and I thought oh is it just me and this woman or is it lots of us who are the main earner uh, I sent a message out you know through in the internet just saying are you the main earner and how do you feel about it and one woman came back and she said I was the main earner for three years and those were dark days and I just thought no one should feel like that. We should be proud of being main yeah. earners. We should yeah. be happy that we can hold our families together. And that's when I started doing the research and then ultimately wrote Rocking Your Role. Wow, oh, wonderful. Yeah. I mean, you help, I, I, I know you help a lot of um, people to navigate through their work and achievements, but what would you find as being the main obstacles mm -hmm. that they, and challenges that they need to actually overcome? Yeah, particularly when I'm working with women, I think it's our limiting beliefs, those little gremlins in our heads, mm -hmm. the ones that say, yeah, I'm not... I'm not slim enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not beautiful enough, you know. <laughs> the big I, yeah, yeah, you know, to do these things. Who am I to do them? I think those little voices um, are the things that hold us back, our interference, and they stop us reaching our potential. As well as that, I think there's often a perfectionist tendency yeah. with women. Yes. You know, there's this thing, we've got to do it right. If we can't do it right, yes. we shouldn't try. Mm. You, know, uh, you know, we can't fail. Mm. We can't make mistakes. Mm. And I, I think a lot of that goes back to being really good little girls. You know, we got rewarded <laughs> for being really good little girls with very neat handwriting yeah. and perfect hems. But I think later <laughs> on in life, you've got, to, you've got to actually be a bad girl a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of a bad girl. A bit of a bad girl. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you, know, you do things like yeah. step by step, isn't yes, it? Yeah, it doesn't always, Rome was not built in one day, as they no, say. that's it. And yeah. as you all were saying earlier, the mistakes and the failures are real learning points yeah. and they really help you grow and evolve. Yes, yeah. indeed. Wow. Well, you're the Vice Chairwoman of the 2020 Club, yes. so congratulations about that. Thank that's you lovely. very much. Well done. I just want to know, what does your organisation hope to achieve? Yeah, it's really about having more women of colour as role models. Mm. There's an absence of role models. And if you see, if you don't see it, you can't be it. So, the, yeah, the idea is that we really um, increase the awareness of black female entrepreneurs, mm. build a community. And we also go into schools and we have an interview and entrepreneur programme so that young girls can know that this is one route. It's not the only route running a business, but it's one route and there are black females doing it. So they can get to ask you mm. questions. Absolutely. And they ask Wonderful. the best questions. <laughs> Jen, you are also on board of Generation Success, yes. which is a student organization to help charities, right? Yes. And my question for you is, um, how do you think, why do you think it's important for young people to get involved with um, charities? I think young people need to recognise that they're very powerful yeah. and I think with the media attention that they get at the moment and the messages out there, what's that saying is, you know, you're going to be the poorest generation, the future's not good for you, mm -hmm. you know, there's your, you know, everything's... Oh, qualifications are handed to you on a plate there's not really very positive messages okay. and I think when young people know they can make a difference in, 
mm-hmm. the world, they are powerful and they know they have choices mm-hmm. and they know they can craft the life they want. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for young people, if you start thinking about other people, if you start giving, you stop worrying about yourself. That's true. You know, getting very self-absorbed mm. and getting down, there's no need for that. You know, that's when true. you can make a difference, when you can give, you gain. And that's, that's what I'm really people it. That's know. really good. Um, I'd like to ask, um, excuse me, I'd like to ask, what makes women more leaders rather than followers? Right. I think leadership is a really in- interesting topic and people come at it from different angles. I think about personal, leader, personal leadership and there's a quote that I love. It's, you were born an original, don't die a copy. Oh. I love that. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, and I think yeah. that's what leaders are. We know we're original. We embrace our uniqueness. Mm-hmm. We are not afraid to stand out on our own. That's and then right. that's what it's about. Oh, fantastic. Mm-hmm. I'd like to ask you a, bit, a little bit more about the entrepreneurship programme that you do. Um, mm-hmm. What kind of things does it entail? So um, in terms of the 2010 club or generally the work I do? Um, where you go into the schools. And, okay. And, yeah. yeah, so schools call us in and we have a panel of typically eight black female um, entrepreneurs and the, the young people um, prepare questions in advance and have the opportunity to ask us questions. They get to know a bit about us so they see our bios. So the fact that I've written a book, I, you know, I often get questions about what it's like to be an author, how do you write a book? Others, some are in the music industry, some have actual skincare products they'll ask about how how you how they did it and one of the big questions that they always ask is my parents you know are pushing me down this academic yes. route you know <laughs> how did you deal with your own parents and yeah. interestingly enough my mum is a very supportive person but I remember when I said I'm leaving my corporate life to become a coach she said to me isn't that just a fad yeah. you know what, <laughs> what, what about your pension you oh, know so all, of, yeah, all of those things and it, you know it's about uh, yeah yeah, so we have to manage that. You just listen to your parents, have a fallback, do your qualifications. But you know what? Sometimes we do prove our parents wrong. And, you know, the jobs of the future haven't been imagined by our parents yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, yeah, that's okay. fantastic. Yeah. So this is your book? Yeah, yeah, this is my book, Rocking Roll. I'd like to gift you all oh, a copy. So and because you are, you are women who wow. are rocking your role yeah, in life. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> this book is about I'm loving you know, it. ditching the guilt. It's about not having to be superwoman and it's about letting go of what assumptions are around what women have to be and being who you want to be in life. Wow, well, great fantastic. inspiration. Thank Actually, you. just want to ask something a bit more on the personal note, I guess. Mm. Like, from, you know, writing this book and from obviously, because you're writing about your own experiences and, and changes you've made, what um, positive changes, I guess, I would like to ask, have you seen in your marriage because of, I guess, thinking differently and and, and rocking your role. Yeah, I think the book was like therapy for me writing it in a way, as well as um, there are eight case studies in there. So I learned from others' experience as well. Mm -hmm. You know, in any relationship, communication is key. Mm -hmm. And communication is something that, you know, I've worked on with my husband and realised that we know two-way communication is really important. The other is, you know, what do you value about the person? It's so, it's so not about money, is it? Yeah. And it's about exactly. demonstrating that you value someone and what they bring to the relationship. You know, whether that's the humour, whether they compliment you because they're the soft one and you're the tough one, whatever it is. So recognising that it's the opposite and it's the difference that makes the whole. Mm-hmm. So I think there are a couple of things. And the other is letting go. Oh, gosh, there's so many women I meet who, um, you know, before a cleaner comes, they have to clean their house. You know, they want they want someone to support them. You know, they want their husband to to um, cook the dinner, but what they cook is not good enough. And I think you know one of the things I've learned is that you have to let go. You know, yes, you might want the perfect nutritional balance every day, but you know, if we have something that's not that healthy, but there's food on the table and we're okay, yeah. and you know, a few nights a week, that's all right. That's right. And you have to kind of let go and trust that the other person and can do a good job and oh, they will do yeah. did you always want to do what you're doing now or did you have other dreams before well no I was in marketing and I loved marketing really? I was absolutely <laughs> passionate about marketing yeah you know this thing you said re- reinventing yourself yes. you know I was in marketing and I loved it and it was a colleague who just knocked to my office door one day and said where are you going next you know, what's next in your career? You need to get a bigger budget, a bigger team. <laughs> wow. I, said, I said, my lifestyle was, you know, where I was working was right for me. Yeah. And then she said, how about developing other skills? Mm-hmm. She said, how about training people? Mm-hmm. At the time, I was completely not confident. I couldn't mm-hmm. see myself speaking to groups of people, something I do all the time now. Wow. 
And then she said, what about coaching? She said, you're a really great listener. You help people come up, come away motivated mm -hmm. and with action. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, oh, I could try it. You know, actually another qualification on my CV <laughs> would be a good thing. Not yeah. thinking that was going to be completely yeah. life changing. Wow. And the course was, it just helped me to understand myself better, sort of peel off the layers of who I was and yeah. recognize what I really wanted to do. So you really have mm -hmm. reinvented yourself. Yes. Really. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Indeed. Perfect yeah. example for our yeah. show. Um, uh, what I'd like to ask is, did you ever have moments, though, where you just felt like this is not worth it or this is too difficult, you know, or wanting to just kind of give up and stick to what you know and what you're already doing? I think so, because when I started my own business, I said, what I'll do is I'm going to work a lot less hours for much more money. <laughs> that was the ambition. <laughs> but, you know, it's quite all consuming when you run your own business. Yeah. And I ended, up, I ended up working a lot of hours. And there were times when I was thinking, you know what, why don't I just take an easier life? Go mm. get my nine to five, be paid, not be thinking about it at midnight, yeah. you know, yes. um, you know, yeah. not trying to juggle everything and be the accountant and the administrator and the marketer and the person who delivers it. And your own PA. Yes, mm. exactly. <laughs> not trying to do all of that. So there have been times when I've just thought, gosh, you know, I'm overwhelmed. Um, but they're really good learning points because you kind of have to strip back and be much more strategic and work on your business instead of in your business. Right. So there have been there have been times when I found it really quite difficult. Um, and that just that juggling, you know, the, it's really hard to be an entrepreneur and have children and the school ring you and say, oh, your child's sick. And for me to say, well, I'm, you know, 50 miles away. Yeah. I'm not going to be there and yeah. feel the, feel the bad mother you're a bad mother why aren't you around the corner just waiting for us to call you you know so all of that I've had to kind of navigate but I I'm in a good space I feel confident but I know I think that I, I think I embrace failure I embrace challenge now you know I keep stretching myself I did a half marathon this year you know writing the book was something I'd never done before and I just keep putting myself out there because I know that if I stretch myself, I'll learn something. I might not, I might not do it successfully, but I'll learn something. Oh, and, that's, yeah. and so it makes you feel much more comfortable with not knowing about stuff. Fantastic. I, wow. I definitely think it's commendable because I think women, yeah. we do yes. have a lot of roles to play in life. Mm. And also we do tend to be slightly more emotional. So mm. things can get to us a bit more. And then there is that thing of when we don't feel like we're doing everything that we should be doing in one area, like the example mm. you gave of the school calling. Yeah it can sometimes get us down and even make us emotional. Yes. And I can really relate to you. I, I don't have children yet. Mm. I've got one in the oven, but, <laughs> yeah. but I, you know, in terms of the setting up your own thing, I can really relate to that. And there were many times when I actually did cry. Mm. I don't know if you shed a lot of tears, but I did in the whole process of setting everything up. So I, I can completely understand exactly what you're saying, but I think it's really inspirational, very inspiring what you've yes. shared with us. And I really look forward to Lovely. reading this book. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy it's got a lot to thank share. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very nice. We've already gotten so much just from this, this yeah. short time. So thank you so much thank for being you. with us. Keep in thank touch. You, thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, This program is brought to you by UCK.